we are here again this is awesome you have joined me for three days now <laughs> for these facebook lives i am so honored to be here i just love getting to have the opportunity to show up and have these discussions answer your questions share on this topic that i feel so passionate about, so grateful to get a chance to um, learn more and more every day. Uh, trauma is complex to say the least. And uh, my hope is that in these conversations um, and in future conversations or maybe in my course somewhere that we just get to deepen and deepen our exploration together. One of my big missions in the world is making the experience of learning about trauma less daunting so that it feels really approachable and easy to learn. And um, in my experience of it, 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 it can be that way. It doesn't have to be a painstaking. It can actually be really pleasurable and uplifting and enlivening when we do it in a way that feels good to us. So I'm hoping I can deliver it in a way that feels good. <laughs> Um, I see there's a bunch of people here. If you would love, if you would like to, or if you would love to, you're welcome to write your name just saying, hey, Facebook does this super silly thing um, where it doesn't tell me who's here. And I just love to know um, who's hanging out with me. <laughs> so if you want to write your name where you're, where you are in the world, that would be really fun. We are arriving into the space together and um, we're in a transitional moment as I've been talking about these last couple of days, which when we can bring some awareness to it and some consciousness to it, our bodies can kind of show up with our minds. I tend to have, my mind is really fine at showing up, but it takes my body a little time. So let yourself get comfortable, notice how you're sitting or standing or whatever you're doing and see if it's possible to even be 5% more comfortable. Hi Daphne, welcome, super excited to be here with you. It, you're in Saskatchewan, Canada, beautiful. Um, as you're letting yourself arrive in your body, your heart, your mind, all of the parts of you, uh, you might take a few breaths and uh, just notice if it feels good to take those few breaths. Maybe it doesn't feel so good. Uh, some of us have lovely connections with our breath and some it's a more challenging relationship. So everything we do in all of my experiences, they're always optional and uh, you get to choose what feels most supportive for you right now. Hi Anaya, welcome. Tuning in from rainy Kauai. That sounds pretty awesome, actually. It's been snowing here on and off today, but now it's really sunny. And yeah, I just feel grateful to get to be here, here in this location in the world and here getting the opportunity to be with you. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, explore this conversation around the various types of trauma. So often um, phrases around, about trauma are thrown around. And I know for me forever, I was like, uh, yeah, I think I know what that means, but not really. Or like, I, I could get a feel for what that is, but it feels like so many of these phrases and words are dropped in so many different ways by so many different practitioners and people that it's hard to know <laughs> what they really mean. So maybe you're here trying to learn about yourself and some trauma that you carry, maybe for your clients or people in your life that you really care about. Hope I, My hope is that this will be helpful no matter what. As I wrote in my post, uh, pathologizing is not my favorite thing. And so there's a way where we can learn about trauma where we're looking at it through a lens of symptoms and problems that we're trying to fix and figure out. And there's a way we can look through these terms as um, inspirational ways to kind of put some puzzle pieces together and go, oh, maybe I'll try that on. Maybe that fits. No, that doesn't. That makes a lot of sense. And so the invitation here today is to have that frame of mind. Um, so many of us get diagnoses, diagnoses slapped onto us 
without a lot of compassion or empathy, without a lot of explanation or uh, education around what that means. And so I just want to say for all of these types of trauma, it is both a gift and a shadow <laughs> to, to carry trauma for most of us. We can learn so much from it. We can come into deeper compassion and understanding and care for ourselves and others with trauma. And then it can also cause quite a bit of challenging experiences. Uh, so we get a chance to embrace it all. We have really sophisticated survival systems. And so trauma, the way it shows up in us is probably, I would say, a state of reactivity, <laughs> stress. So instead of being able to respond to life, to ourselves, to relationships, to moments, instead we tend to react. And most of the time, not even realizing we're in a state of reactivity because our nervous systems are really activated. And that can happen with any type of trauma. And the reason that's happening is because there's a survival part of us that's sending these alarm signals, trying to keep us safe. And when I think of it that way, I just want to, I'm so full of gratitude <laughs> that there is a part of me and a part of every single person that I work with that has this system that's trying to keep them safe, that's trying to take care of them, this survival part sends up all of the flags saying, I might be in danger, make make sure that I'm safe here. And so we can just really appreciate that even if that's uncomfortable, even if it creates chaos in our lives, that there is a part of us that's trying to do a really good job taking care of ourselves, even if it's causing some challenging experiences and suffering. Once we can start looking at it that way and embracing it, it's much easier to give it space to see what's happening, to embrace it, and to really feel the impacts of it in our bodies. Just checking out the chat over here. Beautiful. Spring arrived yesterday. Okay. And then I left again today. I was just talking about getting um, a photo shoot in the wildflowers here and um, a daydreaming about when the warmth comes in the desert here. It's so beautiful. I just saw the UPS truck pull up. My puppy will probably bark. My apologies. I might hit mute for a second. <laughs> um, so there's the doorbell. The top three types of trauma that are probably named the most are called complex trauma developmental trauma, and shock trauma. Sometimes shock trauma is called single incident trauma, where it's one thing, like a, a big impact, like for a bicycle accident or um, like a broken bone or a car accident, things like that. That can be also called, you'll hear, single incident trauma. There haven't been a whole bunch of occurrences of the same thing, and so we're not repairing a whole bunch of fear around a, this, around a whole bunch of incidents. So single incident is just this one thing. That's not to say that it isn't really impactful, that it doesn't take an incredible toll. Um, somebody I love a lot in my life has a traumatic brain injury, which was a very traumatic experience, and it was a single incident shock trauma. And it has completely changed his life, and it has really, really um, taken over a lot. Um, so that's not to say that when we're, we're comparing um, shock trauma or single incident trauma to something more complex, multiple incident trauma, that the impacts aren't um, the same. We can't compare impact. The reality is it all causes different responses in every single one of our unique nervous systems. And so when people, especially my clients, come in and they're like, oh, I've only experienced that. Others have had it so so much worse, but they have chaos all around them. They're experiencing a lot of anxiety and depression. And it's like as though they had experienced so much more. I just, you know, I have to remind them we cannot compare. This is the state of a nervous system that does not feel safe and maybe got stuck in a state of fright or fear. Uh, and a lot of people get stuck there saying, I can't compare. I haven't, I haven't been through as much as so-and-so. And I just want to say we've all been through 
traumatic experiences and comparing just exacerbates that shame response, which is the worst thing we can do for healing trauma. And so we get to just kind of put that in the background and embrace whatever's happening. Um, so the developmental trauma, that can happen anywhere from in utero, pre-birth, uh, to the few years after birth. And some people even include the first or the three generations back. Um, some indigenous traditions include seven generations back. Um, the science around developmental trauma currently includes those three generations back that we carry genetics um, from previous uh, generations that carry trauma that was unresolved from then that we get to then try to heal and resolve on our own. Um, so developmental trauma, it's really what we came into this world with, the, that pre-birth, the lineage, the first few years. And Kathy Kane, my teacher, she says anything that uh, disrupts healthy development is developmental trauma. So these ruptures could be anything from a parent or a primary caregiver that was uh, inconsistent, that was not dependable, that gave mixed messages, that was neglectful, misattuned uh, the majority of the time, probably 70% of the time or more, um, that, or maybe there was some kind of trauma that happened to the parent uh, when you, you were in utero or when your client was in utero. Uh, it could be a physical accident, something like that. Anything, any kind of rupture that causes uh, so much overwhelm that the system cannot process it. And those happen in those first few years of life. Uh, complex trauma tends to come out of uh, the combination of developmental trauma, some impacts of those ruptures, and maybe a shock trauma incident. Folks with developmental trauma have a much higher likelihood of experiencing shock trauma throughout their lives. Um, if we look at, many of you have probably heard about the ACE study, um, Adverse Childhood Experiences, and it, it was a study that Kaiser originally started um, with studying adults looking back at their childhood and what they experienced in their households when they were growing up. and the more kind of abuse and neglect and addiction that people experienced in their households growing up, um, it was kind of a rating from zero to 10 or zero to 13. There's a couple of different studies with different numbers. Um, the higher number you were, the more likelihood there was for more health risks, more addiction, more um, high risk behavior, which results in shock trauma, all of this does. So complex trauma is a fancy way of saying there are complex symptoms that are coming from these various layers of trauma throughout life. And it wasn't just one incident. With a shock trauma experience or, or a single incident experience, if the person, maybe it's you, maybe it's your client, maybe it's a family member, if they had a resilient childhood, if they don't have developmental trauma, uh, if they had a really well-formed support system or um, school or uh, church, community, that kind of thing, experience growing up, that later in life, if they experienced a violent incident, one of those shock traumas, something like that, that it was much more likely they would repair that very quickly. They, they would be able to move through that experience, process it, and then go back to feeling like they did before. However, somebody that experiences a shock trauma who had developmental trauma might take a little bit longer or a lot longer uh, to repair that traumatic event because it became a layered experience with a bunch of trauma on it before that. And what can happen with complex trauma is a whole bunch of complex symptoms can arise. And I reach, recently reached out to Kathy, one of my teachers of the somatic regulation and resilience training, because she speaks about it so beautifully, and this is what she treats, um, that 
it's often a combination of the physiological symptoms, the somatic representations of um, pain or illness, that kind of thing in our bodies that can come along with um, chronic complex emotional states, depression, anxiety, anger, like anger, any, any emotion, name it, just all of them coming in in overwhelming ways. Um, so it's the physiological and the emotional that are really layered together with complex trauma. And so often folks with complex trauma will be in and out of healthcare, in and out of therapy, just trying to, to get little bits at a time taken care of. Um, but when we don't know it's complex trauma, it can take a really, really long time to treat either on the emotional side or the physiological side. So I just want to pause for a moment because that was just a whew, lot of information. And I want to see if there are any comments over here. Take your time. <laughs> um, feel free to ask questions. Let me know how this is impacting you, how it lands. I tend to get talking really fast around these topics because I just love them so much. <laughs> and many of us have experienced this. So if it's bringing up something in you that um, you have been through, notice if there's a way that you can tap into a support in this moment, a resource. Can you connect with something in your body or around you that feels supportive, soothing, comforting. I have this very soft shawl thing. I promised myself I would never wear a shawl when I became a therapist. <laughs> Look what happened. It's happening. Uh, yeah, so I'm guessing there's questions or clarifications. Maybe I just did a great job <laughs> of doing that. I want to move into in a moment um, the other part of the post where we talk about uh, what happens in our bodies around the, these experiences. I just wanted to give some space for any reflections. And if you showed up uh, since the beginning and you want to write who you are and where you're from, I'm so glad you're here. It's really exciting to know there are people watching. I would love to know who you are. <laughs> And if you're watching this video later to also do that, that would be great. So when we talk about bringing trauma awareness in and we're supporting folks with all of these various kinds of trauma, the number one way to really be supportive is to be in our own experience of our regulated nervous systems in our bodies. Uh, connected to our breath, maybe connected to something that feels supportive, just like I just asked you. Is there something that feels soothing or settling to your system in this moment? And when we can do that, we get so much information about what might be going on for our clients. When we are right here in ourselves, all of our entire bodies are talking. Our whole history is talking to us. We carry so much too, especially as care providers. We can get so much information. The more we practice coming into being settled, coming into our center, gathering our support around us, getting connected to communities that we can consult with, all of these things help us feel like we can be safe enough to be right here with everything that's arising. And what we might see in our clients' bodies as we're there, I mean, most often we aren't going to know if they have developmental trauma or complex trauma or shock trauma, um, especially if that's not your specialty. We can just imagine, you know, a lot of people, if not most, <laughs> have experienced trauma. And um, I'm guessing this person who's coming to me for help has been through some challenging things in their life and it might be trauma. So from the outside, it could look like anything. One person's defensive accommodations, which is the way they learn how to survive, might be to have it all together and look really perfect on the outside, but on the inside, their heart is pounding, uh, their their shoulder blades might be like bracing to get ready to run or to, to brace against for a fight. 
their belly or their gut might be churning. Folks with really early trauma tend to, their gut tends to shut down um, and all of those survival systems make it so like all the organs shut down, the the arms, the legs, they're, all of the blood circulation doesn't go there because they're keeping the vital organs uh, really, really safe. <laughs> Um, but we wouldn't know just looking out, seeing that person with a defensive accommodation that has learned how to just seem like they have it all together. I might be one of them. I mean, I don't know how together I really have it, but you know, this is kind of crooked and <laughs> just kidding. Um, that is an experience I know that when the outside is really all together, the inside just feels wildly unsafe. Others um, might feel or might be really obvious on the outside. They might be speaking really fast. They might be super anxious. They might be sharing with you all sorts of agitations and irritations and um, situations they get in with friends and relationships. With developmental trauma, it's really common for folks to not have a lot of stable, steady relationships. And so they tend to um, share that. You'll get that information. Then we can just go, oh, okay, we need to create a lot of space and compassion around this. Of course that happened. That wasn't something you learned how to do or in your early childhood. We can just know that in our hearts. Um, a lot of folks with um, trauma might present as um, kind of curled over, kind of collapsed, kind of, uh, the puppy's going to go again, <laughs> sad. And we can just create space to embrace that, to welcome it. We welcome every part of every person that shows up. Um, what I really want to share, because we could spend a year doing a training on physiologically what you could see, um, skin tone, breath, heart rate, uh, all sorts of things. But that's, that's kind of, sorry about that. Um, an ongoing trauma training situation uh, for it to really be your specialty. And what we can know and what's really important to hold is that it's pretty likely that there is trauma sitting in front of us, whether or not we can see it. So it's very, very important that we just open our hearts genuinely to whoever's sitting in front of us having that experience and knowing that whatever they're sharing makes perfect sense. So I'm gonna check out the chat again just to see what's over here. <laughs> My puppy is going through an experience of trauma. She had a really hard accident about a month ago with the dishwasher. She broke a lot of dishes and scared herself. And now um, when my lovely neighbors come over to take care of her, she's barking, which wasn't the case before. So we're working something out here. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Yeah, and Annika shared noticing compassion and sadness and hope. I'm glad there's some hope here. And Daphne, oh, and welcoming your compassion and sadness as well, of course. And da Daphne, I'd love to hear more also about several shock traumas and what about things like a serious diagnosis like cancer? Is it, it is one but ongoing, but not in a developmental time frame? Yeah. So anything ongoing like that, that's happening in a kind of a repeated way, like a chronic health issue or cancer, absolutely we could consider a complex trauma for sure, even if it wasn't there, um, even if there wasn't trauma in the early years. And um, like a shock trauma, I kind of, you know, it's so hard to just like name them. I guess that's part of learning, but I'm like, oh, somebody is likely has experienced these things and I just don't want to um, activate their system. Um, and so if, if you have experienced shock traumas, you know, just like place your hand on your heart or your face, belly. It's like so much care and kindness and gentleness here. A shock trauma might be something like a sexual assault or a rape. It could be a car accident, a bike accident. I have so many friends that have been in bike accidents. Um, I have used to fall off my horse a lot and it was scary and end in the hospital. Um, 
we tend to be like physical accident type things. I'm sure there are some that I'm missing. Um, definitely in an experience, like in the military, people have shock traumas all the time. Um, but then it can also turn into a complex situation because they're not necessarily in a supportive atmosphere. It might be happening again and again. Uh, so that, those are just some examples right there. And <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that you have a dog over there too. That's beautiful. We are, I just looked at the time and I was like, just about to get started. <laughs> I really, really hope that um, there is something here that you can take with you that actually feels empowering, that helps things make sense a little bit more. If that is true, please enter it into the comments. What is making more sense? What's impacting you in a way that's giving you hope and all of that kind of stuff? Uh, let's see, Anaya shared, can shock trauma also be a parent yelling at a child over and over? I would say that's complex trauma. So we're working with attachment wounds there, um, how we attach to our parents and our care, care providers. And when it's happening in a repeated way, it's complex. Um, and then Daphne, um, yeah, she shared, I'm thinking if you've been raped and been in a car accident and with a little bad luck, would that be complex trauma? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we think of complex both as multiple traumas layered on top of each other and then a complex array of both physiologic, physiological and emotional symptoms. And I have to imagine with something like that, that would absolutely be present. So again, please write in the comments, what has been impactful? What are you taking with you? What's giving you some hope? What's making sense? And keep those coming. That helps me understand what you're understanding so that I can deliver more and more. We're gonna meet here again in two days on Friday for another live. I might even keep going with these if it's feeling beneficial to y'all. So you have to let me know. Um, and also this is the kind of exciting opening event for creating safer space live. We just opened the registration. We're starting the first week of April. It's gonna get super full. There's so many people already in their hundreds and, um, this trauma awareness experience is going across the world. So if you are a coach, a therapist, a facilitator, and you want a little more trauma awareness, you get more of me talking like this at you, but also a lot of practices. The live, we get an interactive engagement where we'll practice a little together. You get to ask your questions, share your experiences, and become more trauma aware together as a community. It really is a worldwide community. It's so exciting. And it's open now. And I'd be really excited for you to join me. I feel deeply honored that people are interested in this these days in these times because it is imperative to be trauma aware if in a care providing role not only for folks with trauma but also for just every single other person too <laughs> so um i'll post that creating safer space in the comments and if you join today this week um you get to be part of the bonus experience that's happening next week uh before we start officially in about three weeks so you'll get to if you sign up today too you also get to wa start watching immediately and implementing everything you learn right away so i hope you will check it out and i hope you'll join me so good to be here with you have a beautiful day thank you